Hello everyone, Andy from Sea Urchin. I just thought I'd take the opportunity this year to do kind of an overview of the year as to how it's gone, which months have done better, you know, uh, and, and highlight some of the, the really the good things that have happened. So this is the end of my second year now since I took on Sea Urchin and I've loved every minute of it. I really do. I enjoy my job. Um, never had a bad day on board. So to start things off, we'll go right the way back to January 2022. Now, we're well into the uptiding um, season, if you like, by then. We normally start having a look at the uptiding grounds in November, and then as the water gets stirred up through the winter storms and we get the northerlies in, then the fishing kind of gets progressively better, usually, along with the sea temperature dropping. So January onwards has always been my favourite time really. Um, we Some of the better fish tend to come sort of February time um, as we were to find out. So January my first, I did have a few days where I didn't get any bookings in January which you know I get it, it's after Christmas people are you know got other things, it's tightening the purse strings and making a regain. So I still had my regulars who love a day out up tiding so that's what we did. I don't recall and checking my diary that we ever we did any wrecking trips at all even though we had some smaller tides um, every day that we had available where the conditions permitted we were up tiding and looking through my records for January it was sort of two-thirds of the way through January where we started to th there was a noticeable lift in the size of fish that we were catching so initially early part of January the average stamp was maybe between two to three pound which a lovely eating fish you don't get me wrong if you if you wanted to pop a few in the freezer the uptiders of two to three pound really are the, the ones to get however we all like to catch big fish and um there was a day i think it was the uh 17th or 18th of january i had a lad from birmingham called arcadius he'd never see fish before and Myself, Tony Barrett, who's one of my regular anglers, and him, had we took the boat out, just the three of us. Um, lovely conditions, I must say. The, the, the conditions were nice. There were, it was a decent tide. It was a five metre tide. And we shuffled down towards North Cheek of Robin Hood's Bay and had a couple of drops down there. Quiet to start off with. And... We basically we waited for slack water. Slack water on uptiding can be really frustrating. The boat swings around on the anchor and that's what we were doing. So we had like half an hour respite where we just brought the rods up, had a cup of tea and a chat, and then repositioned the boat, just waiting for the flood tide to come through. As the flood tide came through, it was just like somebody had flicked a switch. It was exactly what we'd been waiting for. The, the rod tops, literally, we, we were fishing two rods each because there was only three of us on board. And literally, you struggle to keep two rods in. It was brilliant. We just kept picking away and picking away. And Arcadius, who'd never fished before from a boat, he'd never boat fished. He was taking all the advice. Tony had really taken him under his wing, which was great to see. And he got him going well. He really did. So Arcadius is plugging away. And then it, it was the, the typical, I've got a monster bite, where there was a couple of little flicks on the rod tip. And then just a big thump. It just went mm. And I saw the bite and I said, Arcadius, he said, you might want to have a look at that. So anyway, we, we, we trained him well now. He, he didn't just strike wildly and start. He, he, he lifted the rod up and he said, I can't feel anything, Andy. I said, just put it back down then. So he put it down and nothing happened for another minute or so. And then the same again, Oof. a big tap on the top. I was like, I think there might, there might be something on there. I said, just wind down and have a look. So anyway, he wound down and lifted and he was like, oh, I'm stuck, on, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. And he was using, he, he had one of my uptiding rods and he had a rod that he'd bought himself. Now the rod that he'd bought, uh, his own rod, was actually a pier fishing rod. It must have been about 12, 13 foot long. Way too long for uptiding on a boat. Anyway, he, he's riving away at this thing and he put the rod under so much tension. I, th I, was, I was just about to say to him, look, just go steady, otherwise you're going to snap your rod. And then I saw the rod tip nod. And I was like, you're not stuck on the bottom. I said, that's a fish. 
And he said, no, no, it can't be. I said, that is a fish. I said, just try and lift it. A li so anyway, long story short, it took him ages. Must have been getting on for 10 minutes at least. And But slowly but surely, he started bringing this. And I'm, I'm thinking, what could it be? Um, hoping and praying that it was going to be a cod because that's what we all want. And anyway, we, we grabbed the net. And then the next thing, even though the water was clear and you couldn't see it coming up, all we saw was this massive white shape just under the surface. And I said, that is a serious fish. Anyway, we got the net under it first time. 17 and a half pound. Um, some people have been fishing for donkey's years and still never caught a double figure coddling. And uh, yeah, Arcadius completed cod fishing on day one. His first day on board a boat up tiding and he took a 17 and a half pound fish. I'll overlay a picture of it if I, if I can. Um, yeah, it was, actually it was, ni it was a nice clean fish. It wasn't a manky looking old thing with saws or it was a really, you know, nice fish. That was the, without a doubt, the highlight of um, January. And then as we went into February, or certainly the back end of February, there was one particular area that I'd found where on the ebb tide, not the flood, it was on the ebb tide, that it was like a, a gully that came off. And it was a drop of about four metres, which is quite a lot. But anyway, as long as I could get the anchor down right, we could come back and drop in. And you knew, I knew when we were in it, because there was kelp there, you would either get a bite from the fish, in, in which case then you would wind it up, or you'd be stuck in kelp. You could always pull out of it, but you'd be stuck in it. And anyway, this, this little spot, it served us an absolute treat for a for literally two weeks. Not two weeks solid because I, I couldn't fish every day because of the weather. But over the two weeks, every time that I went there, I must have fished it three or four times. Every single time that we went there, we took fish of sort of seven, eight pound. We had another, I think we took, the biggest one we had out of it was... 11, I think we had an 11 pounder out of it, um, 11 and nine and a lot of seven or eight and eight pound fish and they were all absolute minters. Uh, my birthday trip sticks in my memory. On the 1st of March, we fished that, that very spot and a good friend of mine, Ian Kellogg, he was on, uh, I think there's only, I think there's maybe five of us fishing that day and it was quite funny because Tony Barrett, who I mentioned before, Tony was on and he was fishing on the back right, as he nearly always does. Um, I'd shoe on myself in the middle. In, Ian Kellett was on the back left. And Ian, as he always does, bless him, Ian had two eight pounders. Um, I had an eight pounder. Tony's biggest fish, I think, that day was three and a half pound. Everybody on board <laughs> seemed to be getting better fish apart from Tony. But yeah, we had some really, really nice fish that day. Um, probably my one of my best days up tiding. Um, I've had one later this year, but we'll cover that when I get there. So those were two real standouts for, um, for January and February. And then as you get into March, it can be, you know, you're coming into tricky time then in March, I always think, because we're desperate for the waters to clear inside because the wrecks don't, fish particularly well in the winter at all when the you know when the, when the water's all coloured up you don't really you, I've found it pointless I've never taken anything an odd tiny coddling or whatever so you, you really you, you're wanting to sort of cut away from the uptiding and, and get back to either drifting rough ground or so it's just a case of waiting for the weather you want a settle period and then slowly but surely the water starts to clear up so that's pretty much what happened through March and April um, what have I got written down here? Um, yeah, I even put down, it was hit and miss. We were just waiting for the water to run off. I noticed on some of the catch reports that I did that it was in, at that point in early April that we started, because the water, once you get beyond sort of 20 miles, the water's nearly always clear. Um, and so that's what we did. We had a couple of runs out to some wrecks in the 20 mile stream. They weren't too bad. Um, well, yeah, because in April we have the first of the festivals. It was the, the Whitby Charter Skippers Spring Festival. Um, 
and I, it was, I think it was only this, we didn't get many trips out because of the weather, shock horror. Um, but it was on one of those first runs out, we went to a, a wreck in the 20 mile stream and it wasn't a big fish by any standards, but Martin Novo, one of the lads who fishes with me quite a lot, he managed to land a codlin just over six pounds, I can't remember, six and a quarter or something like that. And it turned out that that was big enough to win the spring festival, which was a little bit disappointing because we, we were trying to still get some fish from uptide and we were trying to get them off the wrecks, but there just didn't seem to be anything much of any size around. So yeah, it was a frustrating sort of a time. But then we go into May and June and that was when the water started to clear. I remember in May, I shot my first wreck fishing video and that day I went out and it was really clear. The, you know, the, the difference between the water at two miles to four miles, it was like, oh, it's definitely clear. And I'm like, so the signs were there. And as soon as the signs are there that it's starting to clear, then you're back to business as usual. We'd now, the, the uptiding had really quietened down. So we were no longer fishing at anchor. We were, the rough ground really kicked in. So Whitby, we've got rough ground at like three miles, five miles, seven miles, nine miles. So th there's plenty of it to go at. And because it was not, certainly in May, the wrecks weren't fantastic. Not for me anyway. So we were spending more time. We'd have a look, but it was, no, let's go and start working the ground. And the ground did really well for us. We, we were picking off numbers wise, I don't know. In the region of 60 or 70 fish but you know for a for a for a boat for the day which that's fine all coddling but a lot of them were you know they were oversized but not by a lot maybe you know 40 to 45 centimeters so quite a lot of people to throw them back and some people would take a few but yeah that we didn't I, i'm just The one thing that I did make a note of was that the shad started working. I'd had a discussion with um, one of the lads about shad fishing and he said, why does nobody shad fish anymore? And he was right that not many people seem to be doing it. We'd get an odd one or two, but most days it was, everybody was just bait fishing. And he said, I'm going to make a point of really having a good go with the shads. So that's what he did. He started fishing with the shads and lo and behold, they were still taking them. It was just, I kind of, I think I worked it out myself because people who were using my higher tackle, they were catching on bait traces, the Muppets with a hooks panel arrangement and a whole squid because they were catching on that. And that's what I was putting on the catch reports. I think a lot of people had sort of started to discount the squid, uh, squid. I think a lot of people had started to discount the shads, which you should never do really because it is great fun. Really is a great way of fishing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot a, a shad fishing video this year, uh, sorry, next year, rather. Um, so yeah, the shad started working. Once they start working, that's, you know, you, you're well on your way. Interestingly though, the one thing that still hadn't happened, despite us getting reports from Hartlepool and Bridlington and all the rest of it, they were all catching mackerel. The mackerel were not there in numbers yet in Whitby. Normally in the summer, when the mackerel turn up, that's how we start the day, we'd, we'd go out, get a few strings of mackerel for bait to supplement squid or whatever else it is that people are going to use. And that's it, away we go. But whether it was because there was still a bit of muck in the water, I don't know. Um, but the, literally the mackerel were just, we, we were sort of scratching our heads a bit. Are they going to come? Are they not going to come? But definitely, looking in my records, it was the third week in July before we started getting mackerel as many as we wanted. You know, in the latter half of June, we'd get an odd one or two and then that'll be it. Um, yeah, they were really, really late coming this year. So, but July and August, they were definitely, in terms of numbers and size, they were the better months for us uh, this year, without a shadow of a doubt. We got, in, you know, we were getting plenty of quality coddling, more so than ling. The ling this year, I don't know, they've, Last, you know, 2021 um, wasn't bad at all for, you know, most days through the peak season, through sort of like July, August, September, we were getting double figure ling almost every day 
on board. Yet, for some reason this year, we got some, but by contrast, nothing like we did the year before. 2021, we took them up to £20. And this year, I think our biggest ling was 16, I think it was, 15. Um, and that was one fish, not numbers of them. Um, we had quite a few 11s, 12s, 13s, but not every day, not by any stretch. So yeah, the ling fishing wasn't great for us this year, but so the cod actually compensated for that. We were getting plenty of them. Um, July and August, yeah, they, they were good. Um, I mean, if you, if you want to, I have nothing to hide. Um, I, I put my catch reports up on CB UK, whether it's been good, bad or indifferent. I'll, I'll always try and do a report and there are some on there that says it ain't so good because that's, you know, you do get some days where it isn't and some days where it is. And then we hit September and October and what an absolute... Oh, the one thing I will touch on actually, um, we had the summer festival, Whitby Chart Skipper's summer festival, uh, that ran in July and we lost quite a few days with that, um, with bad weather and what have we. The one thing that stuck in my mind was, I think it was, I don't know, it might have been half, might have been the end of the second week, where we had a day where we went out, we, you know, we looked at the forecast and yeah, it seemed to be okay. And it was just one of those days where it was snotty from start to literally come out the pier ends and I was like, hang on, what, what's going off here? And it just built and built and it was absolutely, it was a grueler. It really was. And I, we went out as far as the nine mile, went to the nine mile ground. We fished there, we fished seven, we fished five. Uh, we came back in and tried some wrecks at Slack. And then as a last gasp, because I was, you know, running out of ideas, I said, come on, we'll go and try the, the three mile ground. And it must have been, I don't know, half an hour before we were due back in. And Gordon Yates was fishing on the back and very similar to Arcadius. I saw him get a bite. I could see the bite on his rod. I saw it tap down twice and then he lifted up and it just went solid. So anyway, I went down to the back of the boat where he was fishing. I was like, you all right, God? And he's like, I think it's got into the wreck. And then it did exactly the same as Arcadius. He got another big nod. I said, it's not, I said, it's not, we're not even on a wreck. I said, I can't see it. I said, I think it's still on. I just think it's maybe a better fish. And anyway, I mean, Gordon plays them gentle. I mean, gentle, gentle. And gradually he edged it up. And, and that, because the water was a lot clearer than in the winter, I could see it a fair way down. And I was like, I was like, that's a good fish. Just keep doing what you're doing. And he got it up with absolutely no issues at all, straight in the net first time. And I think that one was 15, seven or something like that. It won the, fe basically it won the festival. And it was the most horrible snotty day and off rough ground. So it was a really pleasing capture because a lot of people I think are obsessed with bigger fish living on the wrecks. And that's certainly not the case or not for us this year. All the better fish that we caught um, came off ground which is good um, because fishing a wreck for a whole day for 10 hours, it can be very, you know, it can be excessive on the amount of sets of gear that you lose and all the rest of it. And people sometimes just discount the rough ground that oh, it's sort of like, we just do that to fill time before we can get on the wrecks. And for me, no, the technology that's available now shows the ground in so much detail that it really has changed the game. I love drifting the ground, trying little little areas, and and I've learnt lots over the last two years of areas. And there's and there's one in particular now that I've christened myself called the Black Crack, um, which just shows up as a black crease on my um, chat plotter on my Navionics. Um, I have the release shading. It's just a black crack in amongst the rough ground, but that's where that fish came from, and countless other good fish this summer um, it's been absolute an absolute treasure trove yeah um so that was gordon winning the festival and then we had september yeah september and october september and october this year were absolutely terrible 
there's no other way to describe it. They were terrible. The weather, in total, in those two months, I did six trips, despite being booked every day. There was a couple of days where I'd not made the boat available because there were some really big tides. But on, I, I cancelled over, you know, so out of 60 days, I did six trips, which is pretty poor. But in amongst all that, we had the Autumn Festival. And this year, so usually the Autumn Festival, that's when the big, you know, it's big ling time. Normally uh, we're galloping off to, so everybody, we all have our own favourite wrecks where, you know, it's done some nice fishery in the past. But like I said just before, that this year, for some reason, the ling didn't just, they just didn't seem to be there in big numbers for us, certainly the better size fish. And we combine that with the bad weather, one of the days that we could get out, or we did go out, which turned out to be another groobler, because it was real snotty when it said it wasn't gonna be, um, we couldn't really drift the wrecks because the wind had freshened so much that wind and tide together, we were like doing 1.7, 1.8 knots. So can't fish the wrecks at that speed. So we were on the ground. So I went out to the five mile ground this time and we started drifting on there. We were picking a few fish here and there. Um, there was, because it was the festival, I think um, Alliance, uh, Gans on Alliance, he was next to me. And Kevin on Gene K, he was out there as well. Um, I think there was three of us, if not four, out on that five mile ground. And I, we, you know, we were drifting our lines, the areas that we like to drift. And um, Keith McCants, one of my, one of the lads who's, he's fished with me since I took, took the boat on, um, comes quite regular. Not a massively, massively experienced boat angler. Uh, he does lots of cat fishing and stuff, but he's, improved, he's certainly improved a lot since he's been coming with me. And he was fishing under the boat, which, some people say, is the, well, it is harder to fish under the boat than it is to fish with the lines running away from it. But he, you know, he was plugging away. The only thing with fishing under the boat is you cover the fish first, if you like. So anyway, I saw Keith's rod go. In fact, no, I didn't. That's right. I was talking to somebody on the radio. Dolly from Trot On had shouted. Um, and anyway, we were chatting on the radio. And I saw, I, I looked behind me and I saw the net getting brought up the boat. So I thought, oh, somebody must have a, a reasonable fish. Um, and I said, oh, just hang on, doll. I think somebody has got must have a, an half-decent fish. I said, the net's just going in. So anyway, I went out the way. They were just lifting it over the side. And I can't remember the size now, not exactly without looking. 14 pound something it was. Um, and that won the festival. It was incredible. Another snotty day. But to cap that off then, um, like I say, when you've got, it's just lost, there's so much of it is down to luck. Um, being the right angler in the right place, on the right drift, covering the right bit. Um, yeah, because I could have thrown a cup of tea at Alliance. It, literally, we were drifting similar lines. And that's just the way it goes. But yeah, that fish, and then we moved into the three mile ground that day uh, to finish off with. And the lad who was fishing next to Keith, under the boat, Literally, exactly the same thing. Boom. I, I, actually, I was actually stood watching him. I saw the rod go down. I was like, it's not stuck. I said, that's a fish. And he said, I can't move it. I said, you're going to have to. I said, the boat's drifting away. But anyway, slowly but surely, got that one up to the top. And I think that was 13 pounds something. So we had a 14 and a 13. Um, which were two of the better fish that we actually had through the summer. But yeah, that was kind of it. It was six trips in two months. So that was the ha a highlight of a really disappointing autumn, to be fair. Then we get into November and December. Uh, I love winter fishing. Not just sea fish, I just love winter fishing because you don't get so many people doing it. Um, so for my own personal fishing. In, in November this year, we started to have a look a bit of uptiding earlier than I did the year before. The wrecks had been had started to sort of go off the boil. So I was having a mixture of wrecking trips and a bit of uptiding. 
And the uptiding signs were actually pretty good. In no I mean, we're only talking November just gone, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, and I was like, I was quite encouraged. We were getting some half decent fish, five, six pound most days. And I was like, we could be on for a really good winter. And then we got some storms. We got some easterlies. We got a big set of easterlies came in and they lasted. I think it put us off for a week and a half maybe before we could get back to sea. But literally, as the easterlies fell away, I got what we'd been waiting for, which was a chance to go and have one look at some wrecks in the 20 mile stream. Because of the weather, we'd not been able to go out and fish that far. So nobody, as far as I was aware, nobody had been out to the, these particular, or I'll say this particular wreck to be fair, because we stopped on it all day in the end. Anyway, we got out to this wreck and I had three lads who booked the boat for themselves. Mark Johnson um, had booked it for him. And I explained to him what we could do. I said, we can either fish inside, uptide. And I said, but it's a fall in tide. I think we were down to four sevens and you, you really want the five metre tides for uptiding. I said, it's up to you. I said, if you want to have a run out, I'm happy to. You've booked the boat. And they said, no, no, we'll do that then. So it was the 30th of November. And we ran out from um, the pier end. We left... I think we left at seven o'clock because slack water was nine and it's lit, it's like a two hour steam out there. So off we went and we got out to the wreck and because there was only the three of them and they're all competent anglers, I was like, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. Um, so I had my gear set up as well. I was like, I'm going to fish. But anyway, I set, so I, I, I needed to see which way the boat was going to drift first with the wind and tide and all the rest of it. So I'm stood first drift, I set it where I thought we should be and said, right, away you go, lads. And they dropped down and I watched Mark Johnson drop down and we'd, we'd literally, because it was wind and tide together, I thought we're not going to drift much. So I'd actually stopped us on the wreck, so we were dropping straight into, this, into the wreck. And anyway, Mark got down to the bottom and I don't think I even, you did not even count it to five before it, I, boom, boom, and oh, he, he was straight in. And anyway, he got them up and he had, they were fishing exactly the same as I do with a, like the Muppet bait traces that we talk about all the time, with just with a squid on. And he had two cod on the same hook, um, one on the, you know, one on the panel on the top and one on the bottom hook. And at that point I said to him, I goes, I think there's going to be a few fish down there, boys. <laughs> and it, that turned out to be the case. It was probably one of the best days I've ever had at sea. Um, it was incredible. We, be, we had a unique set of circumstances that I'd been waiting for for ages. We had light winds, but they were easterly winds. Um, we had a flooding tide. So the wind, and the, basically it was holding the boat almost still. Now this wreck's quite chewy that we'd gone to and normally you lose quite a lot of sets of gear. But because the drift was so slow and how, how I was able to set it, we were just literally tiptoeing across the wreck and it might take up to five minutes to get across the wreck. It was going that slowly up. So we were literally dropping down into it. And it, most most drops, I wouldn't even get to half, you know, 30 seconds before I'd be bringing fish up. Um, we had some lovely fish. Didn't get any doubles, but I think we had them eight, eight and a half or nine, I think was the biggest we had. But we had quite a lot of them. Um, we had, it was just, yeah, filled boxes of fish. It was absolutely brilliant fun. Really, really good day. Um, that was, yeah, 30th of November. And then I've had a, I had a couple more days where we went out to the wrecks and they were not as good as I'd hoped for. Like we went to wrecks that hadn't been fished either. Um, one of them was okay um, and the other one not so good. But that's it. That's, that's fishing, isn't it? Every day is different. But yeah, that, that day in November, that'll live me for quite a while. That was a, a real good one. And then into December, we didn't, we've done a lot more uptiding through December. We've had a lot of lads who've not uptided before or have said to me, oh, I normally give it a miss, not right keen. Um, and which is fine. I just give them my eye tackle, set them up, try and get them dropping and paying off a bit of line. And once they start getting a few, they're like, right, you can see it's nice to see them sort of improve as the day goes on and you'll get people who have not done it before 
by the end of the day, they look like they've been doing it for quite a long time because they just get into that routine and habit. And I think that's where people who say, oh, I hate uptiding. The only thing that I think, you've got to work at your uptiding. You've got to be using, you use a lot more bait because you need, your bait is the scent. Uh, the water's so murky that the fish are purely driven by scent, really. So you need to be fresh bait all the time. And when you've got one in, you make another trace up um, and you work at it. The more you work at it, the, the greater the rewards. Some days it's really hard work, but then we, I think we had two days in December where I was disappointed. I just, whether it was me, I don't know. Um, whether I just not picked the right spots, I'm not too sure, but I had two days that weren't great. But then we had half a dozen that, that were, yeah, sound steady away, really nice. And that kind of brings me to the end of the year. Um, I've not been out now since the 22nd of December, so it's New Year's Eve today. Um, I'm hopeful that I might get out on the 2nd of January, I think. And we've got that down as a wrecking trip. So we're going to go, we'll have a, go and have a poke around and see what's what. But uh, yeah, all that's left for me to say really is, as I did when I opened it up, thank you to everybody for all your support. Without having the bookings, I can't go to sea. Um, I'm not going to moan and complain about how much the fuel's gone up and all the rest of it. I've got to deal with it. Everybody's, everybody's got costs incurred and everything seems to have gone up in price. I'm, I'm not bothered about that. All I'm bothered about is if I can keep my boat full and keep anglers happy and catching fish, then that'll do for me. So, yeah, thank you to everybody who's come on board Sea Urchin in 2022. I can wish everybody a happy, safe and prosperous 2023. And I look forward to seeing everybody on board. Happy New Year. Oh, that's nice.